Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know, I'm still Angie, this is still 4F Beauty, and you should be watching me in black and white right now. If not, welcome to glorious Technicolor. But you will have seen from the title, the thumbnail, and if you have read any of it, don't bother, I don't read it until after the film either, of the description box. This is another collab with the lovely Alexis, and it's a retro review. It's a retro review of the uh, Colourpop villains. Misunderstood palette. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours I've used from this palette, how well or otherwise it performs, and most importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friends. You indeed have the best seat in the house. Some of the sloth straw confirms. It's time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies. Okay, I am back from the intro. I would have told you in the intro that this is another one of my retro reviews with the lovely Alexis and this month we had a couple of months off you may have noticed I hope you noticed um, because Alexis was moving um, and she messaged me saying look um, I'm moving house most of my makeup's packed up it's not going to be the priority when we move house to unpack it all clearly um, first thing you unpack is the kettle and get a coffee. Uh, <laughs> well, that's what I do anyway. Um, <clears throat> you know, and get the house straight and then you get your makeup out. So we had a couple of months break. Um, and she was, she was so apologetic when she asked and I'm like, it's just makeup. It's, it's not like either of us are earning from our channels right now so yes it's a shame but real life is kind of more important than a makeup collab between people on opposite sides of the Atlantic I'm really not going to jump on a plane come over and hunt you down because you wanted to skip a couple of months <laughs> oh dear but anyway for this month, because we are now in October, spooky season, uh, she chose the Colourpop Villains Misunderstood palette. This is a couple of years old now. Um, and whilst I've used some of the shimmers from this, I haven't really touched much in terms of the way of the mattes over the last sort of 18 months or so. So it'll be um, mm, trying to get this at an angle so that it doesn't dazzle you but you can actually see the colours in it. Is that, is that good? Does that work? Kind of? Sort of? Anyway, in terms of mattes, you've got the white one here, these two browns, blue and a black here. The rest of them are all either satin or shimmers. Um, and like I said, I've used some of the shimmers from here in looks that I've teamed with other makeup palettes but I haven't really touched the mattes so it's going to be interesting to see how well or otherwise the mattes perform um, to give them their best shot I'm going to start off with one of my spectrum brushes um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how well that performs. Now, <clears throat> this is still a teaching channel, 
so because of that I go at a speed that you can keep up with regardless of your skill level. If that's too slow for you, use this speed bridge, you can speed me up. I don't mind, it doesn't bother me, so long as you're getting some useful info from the film, whether you're enjoying it or learning a new skill or just enjoying watching the colour combinations that I choose because as always I don't really know which colours I'm going to go for until I start putting them on my face and sometimes I change my mind halfway through. Regular viewers can attest to this. Anywho, um, <clears throat> as part of the, the sort of training teaching element I zoom right in close, it's just my eyes on screen it does mean when I look down to clean a brush, add more pigment, you get a lovely shot of my little widow's peak here. Uh, you're welcome. It's it's a small price to pay for being able to see what's going on, especially if your eyesight's not too good and you're watching me on a phone screen. I'm going to insert a clip just now where I talk you through the differences between hooded lids and deep set eyes. Although the way that makeup wears off of them during the day is very similar, in order to get the best longevity from your eyeshadow, you do need to apply them slightly differently. And I see so many people, including some of these really big beauty gurus, saying they have hooded lids when in actuality they have deep set eyes. There is a difference. It's subtle, but there is a difference. So that clip will be, again, up close, just my eyes on screen, so you can really, really see what I'm explaining about the eye shape. So I'm going to pop that in now. I will see you at the other end of it, applying some of these coloured pigments to my eyeballs. Here we go. Now, um... My eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly. And you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, 
but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies and I am back. Hello! Right, one of the things that I didn't show you is the inside of this has got spot lamination. How cute is that? Look at that. Isn't that cute? And that's the colours. So, where do I want to start? That's a blooming good question. I think, as I haven't done quite a dark look for a while, I might try, I might start off with that. Um, I'm going to dip into Tragic first. I'm using my Spectrum B06. This is from the Mean Girls collection, so it's the You Go Glen Coco. Quite a bit of kick up in the Tragic one, but it's the, the very, very light brown. Now I'm going to do the usual Viennese Waltz blend. So regular turns towards the nose, flicker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. Because if you just rely on the windshield wiper when you're <clears throat> 47 years old and you've lost over 200 pounds, like me, uh, your skin folds over on your eyelids and you get those telltale white stripes or barcoding. Um, it's not always down to age and weight loss. I know slim teenagers that have similar issues. So uh, Hold the brush right at the end so that you're not putting too much pressure on the lid and if the brush handle is long enough just brace it against the palm of your hand there and I'm going to start about half up to my natural crease in my brow and I'm just going to pop this colour down first because as I said I haven't used this for quite a while so I don't know to be honest I can't even remember how well the darker mattes worked with this palette because the majority of the time when I'm using this palette to do a look I'm doing like a one and done so I'll just use the shimmers on my lid and sort of fade them up so I'm not entirely sure how well the darker colours, the darker mattes are going to work so just laying this lighter colour down first will just help if it does get patchy just help it to blend a little bit better although you know as I've said with this chrome pebble eye primer that I use 
it's awesome it's, it's like a cream to powder you, you don't have to set it which is great because you don't ever have to choose between ease of blending especially if you're using pigments rather than an eyeshadow um, you don't have to choose between ease of blending and depth of colour you, you don't have to set this you can just go straight onto it and start blending which is absolutely awesome I have actually bought, obviously this is the, as I mentioned in the other part, blank page cotton. Uh, I actually have purchased the blank page slate, the black one. Um, because what I want to do at some point is do one eye with a white primer and one eye with a black primer. Just so that you can see the difference it makes when you're applying shadows on top. Because it can make a heck of a difference to the shadow. Uh, particularly duochromes. If you've got a dark duochrome, it'll the colour will punch more off of a dark base than a light one. You'll see um, you'll see the range of colours more effectively. I'm just cleaning my brush on a microfiber cloth. I used to use colour switches but they're way too harsh on your bristles, especially if you're using natural bristles. I mean this is a synthetic one. But it is clean, it's just, it's stained, it's... It's one of those ones unfortunately. Okay, right, I'm going to dip into the fates. Same brush. And this is the the deep purple. Again, that's sorry, the deep blue. There's an awful lot of kick up in the pan. I don't know if you can see that. It doesn't worry me because I just, if I, when I need to go back in and pick up more pigment, I'll just pick up the kick up, you know. So, a little bit lower down than I put this one. And let's see how she performs. So far, so good. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. Maybe it's been crappy. Well, I hope tomorrow is a better day for you. If you're at the start of your day, perhaps you're doing your makeup with me or you're watching me while you're trying to wake up in your shower. I know Chris with JMUA puts me on in his shower, but he says that I'm always nice and quiet and doesn't wake the husband up. Or boyfriend, partner, whatever the terminology they're using. Or perhaps you're just watching me over your cornflakes. Whichever, if you're at the start of your day, hope your day turns out to be as fabulous as you are, darling. Alright, it's grabbed a little bit here and doesn't really want to blend out too much. I've got a fair bit of fallout, as you can see, but I can deal with that later. I seem to be getting a little bit of patching at this end here. Let's just see if we can do anything with that. Given that this palette is now probably what, two, three years old, that's actually performed quite well. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean any pigment back off of this brush. And I'm, so I remember that's staining. And I'm just going to buff along that edge just to really blow that colour out. I know it means we're kind of losing brown that we first put down but I'm not overly worried about that because that was really just to 
make sure that I could do this with it and really smoke that edge out. And literally there's no more, there's no additional shadow on the brush. I'm literally just buffing the shadow that I've already applied and softening that edge. The trick with blending, as I've said many times, is blend until you feel like your hand is about to fall off of your wrist and then blend for about a minute more. Happy so far. I know you've been a couple of weeks without films from me again. I'm sorry about that. I um, I really am struggling at the moment. Okay, I should have left that alone. I'll deal with it with some micellar water later. Um, I've really been. Struggling of late. Um, cellulitis on my legs is starting to get better, but the ulcered areas are still very, very painful. Um, and taking their sweet time in terms of clearing up. Um, and of course what doesn't help is where I've got the lymphedema, the swelling in my legs now. It, um, with the cellulitis still being on my legs and obviously the ulcers, there's an area that that liquid can seep out through my leg. So that's not helping the ulcers dry up, obviously. Um, got an appointment finally in a couple of weeks with a um, tissue viability nurse. Apparently she can refer me to the lymphedema clinic if necessary, so that'll be helpful. Um, I know a couple of friends of mine that have had cellulitis and ulcers like that have um, ended up having to have skin grafts to sort it out. I'm hoping I don't have to go down that way. I am getting mightily tired of having to keep my legs strapped up all the time because of course I can't wear I've got a couple of really nice maxi dresses that I could have worn in the hotter weather but can't do it because obviously you know ankle to knee covered in dressings and tube grip and stuff it, I've been living in trousers, which, you know, I mean, thankfully it seems to be cooling off finally. A nice little rain earlier this morning. That's why it's 20 past one. And despite the fact I've been up since half past four, I'm only just sitting down to film because the rain was just so heavy that, um, for those of you who don't know, I actually film in my kitchen because I've got a good, large, south-facing window um, and I use natural daylight and I've just got two LED strip lights behind the camera because obviously this side needs a little bit more help because it's further away from the window and it just evens because I can set the two lights to a different setting each side and it just enables me to 
even out the brightness but the majority of the light that you see um, is actual daylight so it was so overcast earlier that I would have had to put um, the overhead light on which really changes how colours are seen etc just clean this brush off then I'm going to go in with a slightly more tapered brush and I'm going to try the black see there's two blacks in here one of them is, is a matte and one of them isn't um, it's a uh, got like a sparkle to it as you can see but the matte black is quite opaque or at least it seems to be when I swatch so let me grab a small blending there we go Unfortunately this is a Voldemort fee, but it's appropriate seeing as how we're doing villains. It's uh, M506. So I'm going to dip into 101, clearly for the Dalmatians. And with this I'm literally just going to go on the outer third of the mobile lid. And I'm going to bring it up to meet the blue and uh, take it across the eye through the crease. This is the point where if you've <coughs> moved your crease line, this is where you now follow your new crease line. Because I always put the deepest shade in the crease because darker shades go back and lighter shades come forwards so if you're trying to trick people into thinking oh she doesn't have hooded lids at all I can see a crease and I can see lid below it the easiest way to do that is to put a deeper colour through where you want your new crease to be. Obviously up close they're going to be able to see what's going on, but from kind of talking distance we'd be surprised how effective it is in terms of tricking the eye and obviously I'm using a more tapered brush and a, a thinner brush because I want more control about how far it blends up because basically whatever the width of the head of the brush that's how far it's going to blend your shadow out. So you can see this brush is going to blow it out much more than this one. Now the problem that I have with this eye, I've got super deep creasing just here as you can see even with the V-knees waltz I get tiger striping just there. This is because my eye was pulled around when I was a kid, and when I say kid, I mean like four or five years old. Pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital when they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly. And because of that now, I have to break my own rule about not pulling the eyelid out when you're applying shadow. Because if I don't, then what happens is the shadow particularly shimmers, they kind of build up loosely in the creases and then as I'm moving my lid through the day 
they start falling down, they get into my eyes, they get on my cheeks. Um, it looks scruffy and it can be quite painful. Um, particularly if you've used the glitter. I, mean, I, I tend to not use glitters very much on my eyes, as you've probably noticed if you've been a long-term viewer. I have done a few because I've had people ask for tutorials for using glitter. And if you really want me to include a tutorial of that soon, let me know. Quite happy to work it in for you. Okay, I'm actually really very pleasantly surprised at how well these dark mats are behaving. I'm just taking all of the excess powder off and I'm just softening this side a little bit. I do that where I wing the darker shadow out a bit because um, I've always had very very runny eyes anyway and fibro makes that worse, hay fever makes that worse um, and my back garden is like 200 foot long, three trees in it um, and then it's like allotments, railway line, river and woods so tree and grass pollen I get clobbered by it um, so yeah that's great I'm just going to show you how I tidy up fallout get myself cotton pad with my cellar water run it under the eye first and then draw my straight line. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you can just use tape to do that. Yeah, you can. But, think on this. If that tape is strong enough and sticky enough, to stop powder from sliding underneath the edge of it then when you pull it off you're going to be tugging at this gentle skin around your eyes you've already established why we don't want to do that okay now as always never put a wet brush into a pressed powder or pigment I'm going to use this flat packer brush, it might even be a concealer brush, not entirely sure. Once I've added the pigment to the brush, I'll be wetting it with this mm, Makeup Obsession Fix Fit Extra Hold Fixing Spray. You can use any spray you want to wet the brush after you've applied the pigment. Um, you can use you know, a moisturising spray like your MAC or your Mario Badescu. Um, you can use a priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray. Uh, you can even just wash a bottle out and put fresh water in it each day. Just never put a wet brush into a pressed powder or pigment. Okay, how dark do I want to do this? Do you know what? I think I'm going to go into Facile, which is the green. I've been so into green at the moment. Eyeshadow, that is. So, apply pigment to both sides. Now I'm going to wet the brush. So, this bit here, the ferrule, is now wet. So, tuck it into your knuckles and spin to dry that off because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds those bristles in place grab my slay all day mirror so I can see what I'm doing down here and I'm going to apply this to my mobile lid such a pretty green. What a 
what colours and looks this is going to use. Because obviously there are lighter shades in here. But it'll be interesting for me to see whether she does go for darker colours this time. Because she and I have quite different makeup styles. I'm very, I love colour, I love bold, bright, or you know, smoky looks like this. Whereas she does more of a work appropriate looks. Right, I've just cleaned and dried that brush off and I'm gonna pick up more pigment on the brush. Ooh, this is starting to crumble a little bit. Okay, be gentle with it, Bomber. So, pigment both sides. Brush. Dry the ferrule. Right. Now, I'm going to show you what I do to cause as little additional damage as possible. Only do this if you already have the same problem that I do. So, I gently stretch the lid out just far enough to flatten the creases. I don't pull it out around the back of my ear roll. And then I apply the colour as quickly and smoothly as I can. And then gently put the lid back. I don't just let it fall back. And then the rest of the lid I'll do in the same way that I did the other one. I need to pick up some more pigment. You don't have to wet the pigment if you don't want to. Um, I usually do if I'm not using a glitter glue or something underneath it. Because I know a lot of people apply shimmers using their fingers, but I'm too precise with that. I cannot get it precise enough. Plus, early days, of course, pre-lockdown, I used to have acrylic nails all the time. I've gotten out of the habit of having them now. So it's been 30 quid a month, I suppose. Yeah. Um... Yeah, you don't have to wet the pigment, but it does give you a similar look as if you applied it with your finger. Um, it also helps minimise fallout. Now, if you've, there are some ColourPop pigments, sp specifically, which are like their Super Shock Shadows cream powder. Those perform better when you don't wet them, perversely. Right. Do you see what I mean about how that was it's really starting to crumble up? I'm just going to push that pigment back down in a little bit. Just so it doesn't end up going everywhere when I put it back away in the drawer. Okay, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you. And I'm going to pop some foundation on and other base products. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, I've got to wait a little while before I can chat to you again. But for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hey, and I am back again, as you can see soap brows and I coloured them in using the blue. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, continuing with the Voldemorphy theme, this is a M149 brush. And I am going to go into my Jaclyn highlighters and I'm going to use the shade Gleam, which is this one here. I tried my yellow blush out today. 
can't decide if I like it or not. So I'm going to pop a little bit of this gleam just under the tail end of my brow. Because apparently your brows are affected by gravity in the same way everything else is. So by adding a little bit of highlight to the tail it just gives it a lifted effect so it looks like your brows are youthful and up and where they should be. Okay, clean this brush off, admittedly on my leg of my shorts that I wear rather than my micellar cloth. I don't know why, it's one of those things. And I'm going to go into... Let's go into Forest of Thorns. For my inner corner. Why do I always spot that after a press record? Right. <laughs> you don't have to do a light in a corner. As you can see. like that. And then I'm going to grab another one of my uh, Spectrum brushes. This is the AO7 again from the Mean Girls set. That's so fetch. Which is the flat topped but chunky. And I am going to dip into Facile, which is that green, and I'm just going to run that along the lower lash line. It's got really overcast here again. I think we're about to get some more rain, so apologies if the white balance looks different. I have tried to adjust it so that it uh, still shows the same as when I started recording. I love these big chunky brushes. I feel very Maleficent at the moment. Which, seeing as though it's the villain's palette, I guess that's kind of appropriate. Kind of. Do I want to add a little bit extra to the inner corner? I think I do. I'm going to dip into Pain and Panic. Just add a little bit of gold on top of the purple. Yeah, that's better. Right, my beautiful ones. I'm going to pause you one last time. Really not sure on this yellow blush. Um, I'm going to chuck some highlight on, some mascara, some lipstick, and I'll be back with my finished look. I also got to do something with the hair, but uh, that has a mind of its own anyway. <laughs> Once again, darlings, instant for you. Hey, I am back. Okay, still not sure about this yellow blush but maybe it'll grow on me um, 
I went in with the Jacqueline highlight again. Oh, she, that girl knows how to do a highlight. It's lush. Uh, the mascara today is the uh, Maybelline Sky High. Lippy is one of the new ones from Kaleidos. From their, um, is it the Apple something collection? I can't remember now. This is one of their lip clays. I've not tried this formula before. Um, it's very soft on the lips. Mm. Got a little bit of, of transfer there, just the outer rim of my lip, which wasn't quite dry yet. So it seems to be kind of kiss proof. Uh, this is the shade Queen of the Night. Um, I actually bought four of them so that I could get a free tin. Look at that, isn't that pretty? Uh, but because unfortunately, if I've got the box for a lipstick, I will keep the box for a lipstick because. Uh, especially with liquid lips, it stops them from oxidising in the actual bottle or container, whatever you want to call it. Um, it also helps in terms of keeping UV light off of it, which is what can break the formula down. And unfortunately when you put them in the box, it doesn't fit in the tin. So um, I'll have to think of a different use for the tin. I actually bought different one from each of their collections. So from this one I got Queen of the Night. Um, I also got uh, Mercury Mercury Wave. And then from the previous two collections I bought Agave which is the teal and Adobe, one of them, one of the uh, the neutral mattes that they've got. So, um, as I said, first time I've tried this formula, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. A lot of people seem to be liking them um, and saying that they are similar quality in terms of not drying the lips out um, so similar to the dose of colours and the uh, <sighs> Joffrey starfish um, as much as how I dislike the man he does still do the best liquid lip formula that I've tried which is really annoying anyway uh, has a mind of its own as always but this is my finished look with the misunderstood palette what do you think do you like do you not like let me know have you got this palette I don't think you can still get it on Colourpop um, I know sometimes they do bring sort of Halloween-y type ones back in October so I don't know if they may have a limited restock of it but um, as I said it is a couple of years old now but it still performs really really well um, I always once I've used a palette I spritz it with the um, sanitized alcohol spray before I put it away and touching wood I've not had a palette grow any mould or anything on it since and I've not had any issues when I'm using any of the palettes. So that is a way that, I mean powder tends to not really go off anyway. Um, it's only if oils from your skin have been transferred onto the product when you're using the, brush, the, the uh, brushes, the bristles. So that's why I just spritz it with alcohol, let it dry before I put it away doesn't affect the performance of the shadows but 
let me talk about Alexis because the film is about the tutorial but this is a collab now um, I first saw Alexis she was doing an unboxing um, might have been a boxy charm I'm not sure but she was doing a, an unboxing and I just I really really liked her delivery style and her sense of humor and um, her positive attitude and the fact that she calls like I call you my 4F family um, she calls hers the wildflowers which I thought was really really lovely um, and she'd only got, I mean she'd got less than a hundred subscribers at the time but I followed her and um, watched a few more of her films and then messaged her asking if she wanted to do a collab and she was shocked at first like are you sure you have the right person I don't have that many followers and I'm like yeah I don't care how many followers you got I like your style I like the stuff you're putting out um so we did our first collab and then she came back and said would I like to do a monthly collab with her and I'm like yeah absolutely did she have anything in mind and she didn't so I'd got this retro review series that I'd started I'd done I think two I'd managed to to film I said to her you know it's it's it was a popular series I just I had so many other things and series and collabs going on at the time I just wasn't finding the time to do them so I thought this would be a good way to restart my collab series she liked the idea so I sent her a list of all my palettes, my older ones, and she just gets to pick and choose each month as to which one we do. Um, I absolutely adore the looks that she does, even though they are very different to mine, they're very much more work appropriate. Um, it'll be interesting to see actually with with the, the more dramatic colours in here, whether she's going to stick to you know the top half with the browns here and yeah, the sort of the champagne and the the light gold shimmers, or whether she'll go for something a bit more dramatic like I have. Either way, whatever she produces is going to look lovely because it always does look lovely. Um, one thing that always fascinates me is how she manages to apply her makeup without getting it all over her hijab. I mean that that is a skill because I, I get foundation in my hair for goodness sake let alone if I was wearing a hijab as well so yeah props and skills to you my dear but uh, she's someone that I think if you like my style you'd like her style too so if you're a regular viewer please check you're still subscribed YouTube are still unsubscribing people but they're leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious that you've been unsubscribed. It's probably difficult at the moment to tell because I'm being so random and when I'm putting films up, but please, please double check. Um, check your notification status at the same time because mine keep getting knocked back to um, person, uh, personalised rather than all. And when that happens, I don't get any notifications at all. So, uh, once you've done that and you've let me know what you think of this look in the comment section and maybe even give me a cheeky like and a cheeky share just to help with the algorithm on YouTube, um, I need you to pop over and check out Alexis's film. Alexis's film. That's quite difficult to say. I obviously need to go and get another coffee. Um, and just see what look she's done. And if you're not already subscribed to her channel, please do so because you will enjoy it. Um, and I'd like to see her continue to grow. She's going to overtake me before long the rate she's going. So that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, pop across, check out her film, she's linked in 
the description box below so it's easy enough to go over there and check it out. If you're new here, either a wildflower who's popped over to say hi or you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Um, this is pretty much what you're going to get from me uh, with my fibro. My mind does tend to sometimes go for a walk by itself but it usually comes back before the end of the video. Uh, and I'll be chuntering on about everything and nothing from important things to chipped nail varnish. <laughs> but if that sounds like the kind of thing you feel you could watch some more of, it's super easy to do. All you do is you hit that red subscribe button, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the home that YouTube actually pull their finger out and send you some. In the meantime, if you are new here, I've got an awful lot of other films you can watch. Um, they're all in playlists, so it's super easy if you find a particular style of film that I'm doing interesting. Um, I've got collabs, I've got tutorials, I've got product reviews, uh, tag films. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So, you know, there's, there's going to be something, I hope, to interest you. So, uh, you know, I've said it for years, basically. If you want a bit of me time, Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, settle down with your coffee and your custard cream or your cup of tea and your rich tea biscuits and just indulge for a bit and listen to my dulcet tones which are on at you. Alright my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fine. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.